हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू सुन आई एस एंड वेलकम टू योर अनदर टेस्ट डिस्कशन फॉर सी टी एस टू दैट इज़ फॉर द मंथ ऑफ मार्च एंड अप्रिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सो लेट्स बिगिन विद आर डिस्कशन सो आर वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड आई होप नाउ बिफोर बिगिनिंग विद दिस लेक्चर आई होप नाउ यू आर क्लियर दैट हाउ यू नीड टू अटेम द क्वेश्चन आफ्टर आर द लेंदी लेक्चर ऑफ सी टी एस वन सो वेयर आई हैव गिवन यू ऑल द डिटेल्स दैट हाउ यू नीड टू अटेम क्वेश्चन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट्स ओके सो नाउ our first question where we are talking about the gi tags why why different type of rice name are given here with respect to state because they all have got the gi tag this year one thing second thing very important that from previous papers we have seen upsc repeatedly asking questions with respect to gi tags ramsar sites so it is important for you to remember that uh, you know which uh, gi tag either in agriculture or handicraft hand loom different type of categories are there belong to which state okay and here the all these different type of rice belong to which state we will discuss what are its quality that it got the gi tag okay that we will discuss here and you know uh, like let's take the example of previous year question gucci the type of mushroom that was there right so it got the gi tag it belong to jammu kashmir and it got the gi tag and the question was asked by upsc straight away that this uh, belongs to which category either food uh, uh, sorry mushroom or other type of categories where you answered that the correct answer was it, it is a type of a mushroom okay so over here it says nagri dubraj so a uh, in clockwise i have given you the images of all different type of uh, rice that are available so your first is nagri dubraj and it says that it belongs to the state of chatisgarh so first thing this is nagri dubraj which is which is a second paddy crop that got the gi tag in chatisgarh first is jira phool okay jira phool was the first paddy crop that got the gi tag in chatisgarh and now second type of rice which got in agriculture category the rice which got the gi tag is nagri dubraj so it is a indigenous variety okay and here you can see it is non sticky also but it is very fragrant okay it's a fragrant variety so therefore uh, it got the uh, special mention okay yeah and it has the special mention in ramayan also Okay, it has the special mention in Ramayan also, and it got the J tag in Chhattisgarh. Your second is Mircha, ठीक है? Mircha, it looks like this. So as you can see here, it is a black in color. So with respect to black pepper, the this type of rice got the name as Mircha. Bihar, from Bihar. One is Mircha rice which has the J tag. There is one more rice which has the J tag in Bihar. That is your Katarni. ठीक है कतरनी ऑल्सो देयर विच हैज दी जी आई टैग सो हेयर यू हैव ब्लैक इन कलर राइस विच इज योर मिर्चा ठीक है एंड नेक्स्ट इज योर एंड मतलब इट इज नॉट दैट इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेम्बर देन मिर्चा बिलोंग्स टू वेस्ट चंपारण डिस्ट्रिक्ट ठीक है सो थर्ड इज योर चोकुवार ठीक है हेयर द स्टेट इट सीज दैट इट बिलोंग्स टू इज असाम ठीक है so the state which it says here belongs to assam and the word is chokuwar so can you see the image okay uh, intentionally i have given this image to you all because it's a sticky rice it's a sticky rice over here as you can see and it belongs to assam next uh, you have on the yeah, it belongs to a home dynasty also वैसे ये इतना important नहीं होता आपको नाम और state पता होनी चाहिए but still it belongs to ahom dynasty theek hai next uh, next is your uh, chakhau which says that it belongs to manipur theek hai chakhau which says it belongs to manipur and again it is black in color but it is uh, non sticky that one is sticky and we also have boka and joha theek hai assam ke do aur rice hain jinko gi tag mila hua hai which has got the gi tag one is joha other is boka rice so with respect to this question now we have covered the major rice particularly the uh, gi tags that has got particular to the different type of rice so here are the names so it is asking correctly match so your will be all four pairs okay 
ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन रागनाथ मिश्रा कमीशन ठीक है सो दिस इज फ्रॉम आर सुनिया इज प्रिलियम्स नोट्स ओके दिस इज लाइक फ्रॉम आर वेबसाइट वेर यू कैन गो टू द प्रिलियम नोट्स करेंट अफेयर्स एंड देर यू कैन फाइंड देम सो फ्रॉम देर आई हैव पिकड अप दिस पर्टिकुलरली वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रागनाथ मिश्रा कमिटी सो रागनाथ मिश्रा इज द फॉर्मर सी जे आई ओके एंड वॉट दिस कमिटी सेज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वाई इट हैज बीन इन न्यूज एंड वाई we have given you the question in cts that also matters very important so the supreme court said that a 2007 report of justice ragnath mishra commission for religion and linguistic minorities so here we are covering religious and linguistic minorities okay this is very important for you to remember so ragnath mishra commission was set up in 2004 and it gave its first report in 2007 now supreme court has asked to reconsider this report okay so it is not at all that uh, punk functionary that the government may need to recheck this report so let's read a little bit of ragnath uh, mishra commission one more commission you need to remember is bala krishna committee which is established by modi government why it is important i'll tell you ki why you need to remember this committee since we are talking about religion and linguistic minorities that's why i'll tell you why it is important so this commission is the name of the national commission for uh, religion and linguistic minorities that was constituted by government of india in 2004 as i have told you it was constituted to look into the various issues related to these matters chaired by uh, former cji as i have mentioned and the report recommends that the supreme co- uh, the scheduled caste status to complete delinked from the religion and we made religion neutral like sts so what is happening is that till now sc is connected with the different type of li- religions so it says that as per sts uh, where they are not uh, you know they are religious neutral, uh, neutral similarly the scs need to be also religious neutral and it had recommended the permitting dalits who have converted into islam and christianity to avail the scheduled caste so the whole issues and the debate revolve over here which permits this commission is permitting that you know you remember uh, where you know if you have gone through the br ambedkar uh, era uh, you know what all happened with dalits how they converted themselves into christianity and uh, you know muslims so now this committee gives the permission that e dalits who have converted from hinduism into christianity or islamic uh, you know uh, muslims so they should also get the right as scheduled caste now modi government has created this committee as balakrishna committee where they are saying that we need to see the report that you know how many dalits have historically converted into these specific religions theek hai so they have asked parallel to this they have asked this uh, committee to look into this matter and parallel to this among all the uh, you know recommendation that this uh, commission has given the ragnath mishra commission has given among that one point is this clear are you getting it do not get confused between both the uh, committees okay that's why i thought that this needs to be mentioned so that you, this confusion can get cleared okay so your second question which says <coughs> so the second question which says that ragnath mishra commission sometimes seen in news is related to option d linguistic and religious minorities okay so next question we are talking about global buddhist summit from the word itself that what this summit must be talking about so it recently happened in new delhi this summit basically talking about uh, you know encouraging buddhism how in contemporary world the teachings of buddhism can be inculcated okay and how to promote them all these things were discussed and you know in our country buddhism plays very important role plus it connects us to our neighboring countries also or globally also that through buddhism how we are connected to our dif- uh, different countries uh, globally okay so this summit became very important for our country and it happened in new delhi so let's look at the first uh, statement Global Buddhist Summit 2023 organized by Ministry of C- Culture collaboration with International Buddhist Confederation concluded in 
New Delhi. So, this one is correct. Second statement, it is to engage the global Buddhist Dharma leadership and scholars on the matter of Buddhist universal concerns and to highlight the rising role of Buddhism in India's soft power. So, you know, hard power that is army or you know, militarily, uh, you know, you are using such powers that are your hard powers. Soft powers are cultural powers, economic powers, they are called as soft powers. So, any country, if they want to stand out internationally, any country needs to balance out uh, hard power also and soft power. Where is this mention? Our NCRTs are mentioned in political science. Ki. Uh, 11-12 book hai, mentioned hai. when we are talking about cold war contemporary politics aapki hai 12th ki ncrt revise karo sare i know half of you are like clueless are ye kaan likha tha so the contemporary politics books of your 11-12th ncrt there when we are talking about us hegemony there the soft power hard power everything is mentioned that how blue jeans introduced in russia all those things are mentioned over there so if you knew so ye jo india soft power word hai ye bahut uh, aap logo ke liye as a non-familiar nahi hoga, theek hai? So, please revise your NCRTs also. It's a like major thing you need to do. You cannot skip NCRTs for your reference books, okay? Chalo, back to the question. So, they are like your economic powers, cultural powers, theek hai? And this cultural power, we are connected globally with different countries, right? And, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, you must be aware of the development of northeast region donor. So now, eh? our government is focusing on this thing: development of northeast region, whether in infrastructure, railways, connectivities, road connectivities, uh, educationally under inclusive growth, social inclusive growth. Everywhere now we are including the northeast region. So there, from that point of view also. This cultural, uh, you know, engagement of our country with different countries under the India soft power is also very important. Plus, it will play a huge role connecting us globally. Okay. So, your uh, first statement is correct. Second is correct. So, both statement 1 and 2 are correct. And statement 2 is the correct explanation of uh, statement 1. Fine. Chalo. Next question. Next question. Achha, before that, uh, I want you to write down also that who all participated. So, here it is already written that, you know, Buddhist scholars participated. Hai? And even the Sangha leaders, they also participated. So, isi make point add kar lo aap apne question paper pe, that even the Sangha leaders participated. Okay. Okay. So, next question is on cryptocurrency. Basically, the question is on markets in crypto assets. Okay. Cryptocurrency pata hai? based on blockchain technology. Am I right? Based on blockchain technology, which is decentralized plus one more point for blockchain technology. It is done through the process of mining, through the process of mining and this mining is nothing but to solve the mathematical calculations, puzzles, all those things. I mean, this is basic which I wanted to, uh, you know, keep it in mind while looking at this question. So, now what this is going on a lot since 2009 but the loophole that we see is that there has been no there has been no regulatory framework till now there has been no regulatory framework okay and to have the first regulatory framework of this mica is of european union European Union. So, first of all, your US, US is not there, but it is of European Union. Now, why there was this need of regulatory framework? Okay. And what condition they have put? So, basically, students, after introduction of cryptocurrency in our country, 
it was not uh, you know uh, like bitcoins when came that it became a uh, you know hit to the people that okay we can in, we can have one more option for the investment right but what would be the legal scenarios what would not be how much as a uh, as a mode of payment it can be used so all these issues were faced by different uh, governments of the world so then in our government uh, in our country also this has cryptocurrency was not supported actually okay like private cryptocurrency has never been supported earlier so even the finance minister said that you know we will consider illegal if you make any payment through cryptocurrencies then rbi said that whosoever the organizations or the banks anybody who is dealing uh, who is under our regulation cannot go for the cryptocurrency but there has been sk gar uh, committee to ye bhi yaad rakhna apne india ke respect mein sk gar committee who said that okay uh, let's not go for crypto private cryptocurrency but we can go for government cryptocurrency cryptocurrency kya hai blockchain technology se ek digital payment system hi hai theek hai jo decentralized hai but here they say ki okay don't go for private one we can go for the public cryptocurrency so that's why the cbdc is also on the lines of this recommendation of sk gar committee theek hai ye jo main extra points bolti hu na ye likhte raha karo ye kabhi na kabhi kaam aayenge trust me ठीक है सो इन इंडियन सिनारियो ऑल्सो वी डिड नॉट हैव एनी प्रॉपर फ्रेमवर्क रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क रिगार्डिंग योर क्रिप्टो करेंसी बट नाउ फर्स्ट टाइम यूरोपियन यूनियन पास इन द लेजिस्लेशन फॉर दिस मार्केट इन क्रिप्टो करेंसी क्रिप्टो एसेट्स एंड द रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क फॉर दैट ओके एंड अंडर दिस रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क दे गिव यू पॉइंट्स लाइक स्टेबल कॉइंस ठीक है दो चार पॉइंट्स रखो ये आपके मीन्स में भी काम आएगा प्लस दिस वुड बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर यू अगर कोई स्टेटमेंट में क्वेश्चन बोलते हैं दैट यू नो मिनिमम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी शुड बी देयर दैट सपोजिटली देर इज अ सडन विड्रॉल ऑफ क्रिप्टो करेंसीज बाय द पीपल और दे वांट टू विड्रॉल देयर कैश अगेंस्ट द क्रिप्टो करेंसी सो बेसिक मनी शुड बी देयर ठीक है विच विच वुड नॉट डिस्टेबिलाईज द इकोनॉमी प्लस वन यू नो द बिगेस्ट स्टेप दैट अंडर मीका वॉज टेकन is your capped capped what capping the amount that in if in mode of payments you are using cryptocurrency then only 2 uh, euro, uh, euro 200 million can be used only 200 million can be used plus it increase the transparency also what else it did what else it did very importantly that the crypto assets impact so you know this mining this mining mining consumes a lot of energy this mining consumes a lot of energy and therefore therefore it impacts the environment footprints it impacts the environment footprints and you know the involvement of european union when we talk about climate change and now if we see almost in all the con different countries of the world are involved in maintaining the environment and footprints so therefore just uh, under the regulatory framework they came out that you know how it should be utilized that it won't impact the environment also because this mining there are a lot of systems that are connected computer systems and it consumes a lot of energy so what they can do under the regulatory framework that you know they can save the environment so i have given you different aspects from which with respect to which uh, they came out with this bill and the regulatory framework which is important now let's look at the uh, other points okay this much information is sufficient for you all with respect to this topic so uh, second statement it is a first ever legal framework uh, for the crypto assets this is absolutely correct because before that there was nothing there and third even india is looking into it even india is looking forward to be the another country with some regulatory framework with respect to this so third statement it doesn't apply to non fungible tokens that is absolutely correct it excludes non fungible tokens or we have cbdc of our country digital currency all these are excluded from that okay chalo next question so your uh, first statement is wrong second is correct third is correct it is asking correct so only two statements Okay, so next question is on World Energy Transition Outlook 
report and it is asked that it is released by which organization very uh, common thing that UPSC tends to ask uh, you know the students and uh, okay so now uh, one thing uh, okay so you must be aware uh, right till now that it is IRENA International Renewable Energy Agency so is word say up crack kar sakto now now how your mind can play with you how your information can can play with you over here students we have world economic forum also okay and there is one energy transition index okay now how you need to approach these reports previously i told you ki organization likho us pe reports ke mind map ki tarah show kar do ki jaise who hai beech mein organizations and which different type of reports it belongs to aapko dhyan kya rakhna hai what all you need to highlight even in these things i am hoping that till now you have made such map uh, you know in your on your afo sheet and kept with you but what you need to keep highlight with a different highlighter that supposedly in wef you have written energy transition index so when such things come like world energy transition outlook report here is a confusing point that even wef has a similar name index and here you have irena as the world energy transition outlook so these confusing elements you need to keep in mind kuch hoti hai common sense hai ki yaar ye to world bank se belong karegi ye to imf se belong karegi usko yaad karke kya karoge what you will do after remembering them which are in common sense you can crack like the same thing i told you for ministries hai na so similarly for this one also you need to hire keep it a separate highlighter for such confusing elements okay energy transition index it belongs to world economic forum which is all together a different organization and world energy transition outlook report belongs to different organization theek okay? hai energy transition kya hota hai that transferring from fossil fuel energy uh, components to renewable energy it is basically to achieve the net zero 2030 target which you all must be aware of and you know move shifting to the renewable energy targets so th that report is regarding this it is to electrification and efficiency increase electrification and efficiency through renewable energy this report talks about that that is all separate thing that you can write down as notes but what i wanted to you understand is that how you need to approach your prelims question with respect to report or you know index or sometimes talking about few pointers you know like uh, some cop 16 ke under kuch unhone uh, framework diye conventions diye hain so that's how you need to remember okay i'm trying my best to make it easier for you how you can approach all these things but then please keep writing down all these points because trust me you feel that okay i will remember in future but you won't be able to ठीक है एंड दैट्स हाउ यू शुड अप्रोच योर प्रीलिम्स प्रिपरेशन एंड ऑल दीज थिंग्स विल हेल्प यू मोर विल बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर यू मोर फ्रॉम जैन इफ यू विल डू ऑल दोज थिंग्स ऑफ मैपिंग और यू नो लाइक मेकिंग दीज डायग्राम्स दीज विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू इन फ्यूचर इन जैन जैन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इफ यू आर अटेम्पनिक फॉर योर मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर ठीक है चलो सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन ओ एन डी सी ओपन नेटवर्क फॉर डिजिटल कॉमर्स what is ondc basically what happens is uh, you have zomato or you have swiggy right you have zomato you have swiggy now what happens is zomato and swiggy are few very uh, you know uh, i would say big players theek hai big players like flipkart Okay, then you have your Amazon. They are all big players. Now, supposedly, among all of them, I want to open a cloud kitchen and use it as a food service. Now, their taxes and everything are so much that I like. It's my startup of cloud kitchen. Supposedly, the trend which you know all is going on. So now, it would be very difficult for me to go for this thing. Now I am talking here about from the producer perspective. I have told you economics. Me, what to do? Either producer perspective or consumer perspective. So now what will happen is that if I want to go for, if I want to go for such thing, okay, 
then I think 10 times because who will pay the taxes? This is my startup. I might face the losses. So only the big players from the producer sides can play a big role in these one. But in our country, we are promoting Atmanirbhar, we are promoting digital literacy, we are promoting, you know, digital platforms to be utilized for selling of the products by the local market operators or local market or, you know, local sellers. So now uh, government have brought up this ONDC concept where the, you know, the local retailers or, or different handcrafters or artisans can come here on one platform where they can openly directly sell to the customer. Okay, this is producer ka perspective. Consumer perspective say how it is important that you know supposedly you registered or sign up you uh, sorry you signed up at Swiggy. So now instead of Swiggy if you are getting a better deal on Zomato then again you need to go and sign up on the Zomato. Same applies to Amazon Flipkart. You like something you want to wear. You uh, see that okay on Amazon it is costing you rupees uh, 1000. On uh, you know Flipkart it is costing you rupees 800 and on Mintra it is costing you 5, 750. But for that different on different platforms you need to sign up differently. But on ONDC you need to sign up once and you can compare everything and which is the cheapest one you can order. Okay. So, consumer ke perspective se bhi bhoat, uh, you know, convenient hai, producer ke perspective se bhi bhoat hai, that so that the uh, big players cannot dominate the local market of our country. Got it? The basic concept ONDC ka jo hai, e-commerce ka concept hai, but kaise wo uh, stand out karta hai in baki sab se. Okay. From rest of them, how it stand out. That what matters to you. Okay. So, let's look at uh, the first statement. It promotes the uh, exchange of goods and services over digital or electronic uh, network. This is correct. Set up by Commerce Ministry of DP IIT Department. So, this is correct. It would discourage the small business holders and reduce the chance to conduct a business. This is wrong because this is based on the concept to promote the small business or the local retailers or sellers. Okay. And here is the news also that Mint ka uh, ye news hai that Ola joins government backed ONDC for food delivery services. And aise aapko bahut news milenge with respect to ONDC. So aapko pata hona chahiye ki kya hai ye. Okay, you all should be aware of what it is. Okay, so next question is on our Vembanad Lake. Okay, Vembanad Lake and uh, your Ashtamuda Lake. So they both have been fined by the state government of Kerala. Of, of rupees 10 crore for not keeping the not keeping it under protection or uh, you know being careless about it now why they impose this much amount why Vembanad Lake is so important so let's read it so Vembanad Lake is also locally in Vembanad Kyle and it is the it is the largest freshwater lake of the in the state of Kerala it uh, it spreads across Alapuza Kotiam and Eranakulam district and this lake is fed by four rivers Minachal, Achankovil, Pampa which is Pambabi bolte and Pampabi bolte and Manimala. Hai, Manimala. It is separated from Arabian Sea by a narrow barrier island. It is the second largest Ramsar site in India. Okay, it is the, after Sundarbans it is the second largest Ramsar site and the lake is also where Kumar Kumara com bird sanctuary is located. So therefore, it will have different type of species of birds, migratory birds you will find over here and it makes the important site. Uh, the traditional snake boat race is held annually in August over here uh, in the backwaters of Kerala, you all must be aware. Even uh, you guys can add that uh, even Periyar river is included in this. Okay, here Periyar river will be added. Kar sakte. And Kuttanad lies on the southern portion of Vembanad known as the rice bowl of Kerala. So Kuttanad which is one of the very important and called as rice bowl of uh, Kerala is loca located at the southern uh, part of the Vembanad lake which has the lowest uh, altitude in India, the feature of Kuttanad and is also one of the few places in the world where cultivation takes place below the sea level as you know that rice consumes a lot of water so how this fresh water helps in the 
production of rice. So, the lake has a small island called Pathiramanal. I am uh, sorry, uh, pardon my pronunciation, and can be accessed only via boat. Okay, and this is your this is your Kumarakam bird century, and here you I see a lot of house boats, uh, normal boats, and these race boats, snake boats. You will see a lot here, and it is home to more than twenty thousand waterfowls. The third largest such population in India. You all will tell me the IUCN of waterfowl. That is your homework, as you know. I keep on giving you all the homeworks and it is also an ideal habitat for the shrimps the uncontrolled mining of the shells of the lake bed has led to its threat plus this cultivation of shrimps also okay so a lot of shells and shrimps become a reason behind the threat to this lake okay so now let's look at the so uh, of course you guys now aware of that what is the answer Okay, next is your H three N two influenza. So you know we have four influenzas: influenza A, B, C, D. A influenza is due to aquatic, ठीक है, aquatic or wild birds, ठीक है, from whom uh, you know one can get such influenza. Influenza B, ये ना लिखो, everyone. बिफोर लुकिंग एट दी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेकेंड क्योंकि इसमें लिखा हुआ है जैसे इट फॉल्स अंडर इन्फ्लुएंजा ए कैटेगरी आपका जो सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट पढ़ो कि इट बिलोंग्स टू यू नो इन्फ्लुएंजा ए कैटेगरी यहाँ सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट है आपको कैसे पता चलेगा सही है नहीं तो जो ये ए बी सी डी वाले इन्फ्लुएंजाज हैं इतना बेसिक तो याद रखो इवन यू पी एस सी टेंस टू यू नो बी लाइक इन्फ्लुएंस टू वर्थ साइंस इन टेक्स सेक्शन एज आई ऑलवेज टोल्ड यू सो यू नो दिस बी एंड सी इज प्राइमरली ड्यू टू Uh, primarily affected by the infected humans okay and this d is basically by the uh, cattles pigs theek hai jaise aapka swine flu wagaira hota hai theek hai ab influenza mein usual uh, symptoms headaches fever flu yahi sab hota hai recently there has been a lot of flu uh, seasonal flu which was called but somewhere uh, you know the element of h3n2 influenza was seen and this belongs to your category 1 this belongs to category 1 okay that is influenza a theek hai so it is recognized as hong uh, hong kong flu this is correct okay and uh, even sometimes this influ uh, influenza virus can cause you uh, can cause you pneumonia also okay which is a deadly disease so second is your uh, it falls under influenza a category is correct third h3n2 influenza is highly contagious this is also correct symptoms include um, your uh, chills headaches body aches runny nose persistent cough so this is correct so all four are your correct okay okay next is your g7 so just like g20 where i give you few points you need to consider or remember with respect to g20 the members all those things the gdp proportion similarly for g7 also you need to remember so it is an organization of the world seven largest so called advanced economy so when it was established at that time it was the like these seven countries were known to be the uh most established advanced largest or developed countries ke lo economical terms mein theek hai so it is a advanced economies which dominate the global trade and the international financial system and they are formed of canada france germany italy japan uk and your us so the best part about this group is that china is not the member which gives them the liberty that now why g7 becomes important because it gives liberty for the group or the organization to count to come out with the policies which can counter china's economy or can counter the china dominance trying to create like recently even with nepal they have signed so many mous already they have been one of the reason for sri lanka's debt so ये सारी जो चीजें हो रही हैं, the things that are happening around the world to counter that thing, this group is very beneficial. Okay, and Russia joined in 1998, uh, and then it created G8, but was excluded in 2014 after there was their annexation on the Crimea. ठीक है? 
it uh, it's relatively low level of wealth per person means it's not seen as advanced economy in the in the way G G7 members are. So now, because as you can look at the names, you can see that a lot of European countries are part of it. And now you must be aware that what is the economical scenarios of the European countries. So therefore, it makes uh, now in present scenario in the contemporary world, uh, we do not see that advanced level of economy country economical countries involved in this group the way they were when they were established. Okay. Germany took over as a G7 presidency in 2022, which means that it will host the organization. Okay. EU is not the member of G7, but uh, attends its annual summit. Okay. European Union member nahi, but attend karta hai. So here, seven member countries, 1975 mein first meeting with the group of six, 40% of global GDP, one tenth of the world population, or 2014 mein Russia ko hata diya tha. Okay. So only these are the important points you need to consider. So if you have China, you can see it first, then you can remove it and then Russia will also remove it. So, your third statement will be automatically wrong. And if you knew the reason, the significance that why, you know, this group is important in present scenario. You know, G7, now, let's go, Russia has been excluded in 2014, but the comments that they are giving after Russia-Ukraine war, you know, US has banned the Russian oil. Then uh, even uh, these European countries has phased out, uh, sorry, uh, your uh, UK has phased out the Russian oil. Then European Union, two-third of its oil and gas transportation flows from Russia. But now they have phased out the 70% out, out of it. And then Germany, you know, not to, this is a gas pipeline, which, um, you know, st uh, from St. Petersburg in Russia to Lubin in Germany. So now they have stopped this connection also. They have closed this section also to uh, raise their voice against uh, Russia's invasion in Ukraine or the war that they, it, they are facing, the Ukrainians. So all this makes uh, G7 important because G7 ke kuch aise initiatives bhi rahe hai, like malaria, AIDS, to fight against malaria, AIDS, uh, they are always active, to uh, fight against the climate financing. G7 is a very important uh, term hai climate financing climate finance is very important term tk we'll get into this later on uh, definitely you will have one question on this so climate finance ko uh, you know support karne ke liye that you know whosoever developed countries uh, increasing the footprints in the environment uh, the uh, the you know like increase in greenhouse gases, they need to pay penalties against it. Even Pakistan asked it ki bhai uh, developed countries ki se hamara environment impact or environment is impacted due to the development. So they you, they need to pay us some amount. That is we all know ki Pakistan ka to chalo jahan se paise aare aane do. Chhiye. So uh, what exactly this term is? Uh, we'll elaborate later on. But right now, uh, G7 is very important, uh, often in news. So, these basic things you should be aware of. Okay. Chalo. So, your uh, first statement is based on the permanent secretary or office. So, no. And it is collectively contribute nearly two-third of the global GDP. So, here I have shown you that no, it is the, uh, where is it? 40% of the global GDP. Okay. So, uh, Okay, next question. So, next question we are talking about Swamiha. Okay. Now, what is Swamiha? So, uh, this Swami, uh, because you know, it's a uh, one of the investment fund. Okay. This is in detail. We will see the PIB, dekhte hai, Ministry of Finance ke fund. Hai. Hai. So, this special window for affordable. Okay. This uh, you can write down the full form. Special window for affordable and mid house income funds. Okay. I shall write here special window for affordable and mid house income fund. Okay. What will be role of this? That it completes 20,557 uh, homes since its inception in 2019. Fund targets to complete over 81,000 homes in next three years. And fund completes the construction of 26 projects, unlocking the liquidity of more than rupees 35,000 crores. 
करोर वाली वैल्यू इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है आपके लिए वॉट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू ऑल टू रिमेंबर दैट हाउ मच इट इज इंक्रीजिंग द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फंडिंग फॉर दी होम्स ठीक है एंड दिस इज बेसिकली फॉर दी मिड हाउस इनकम होम्स ठीक है सो दे आर द लार्जेस्ट सोशल इम्पैक्ट फंड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर्म फॉर कंप्लीटिंग दी स्ट्रेस्ड एंड दी स्टॉल्ड रेजिडेंशियल प्रोजेक्ट तो ये आपको याद रखने कि ये स्ट्रेस्ड और स्टॉल्ड रेजिडेंशियल प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं बेसिकली द प्रोजेक्ट्स विच आर ऑन द फाइनल स्टेज बट ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ फंड्स आर अनेबल टू बी कंप्लीटेड एंड यू नो अ लॉर्ड ऑफ सिटीजन ऑफ आर कंट्रीज मनी इज स्टक देयर बिकॉज सम बेसिक अमाउंट दे हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट्स बट दे कुडेंट बी कंप्लीटेड आफ्टर द फाइनल स्टेज बिकॉज ऑफ द स्ट्रेस्ड फंड सो देयर द गवर्नमेंट इज हेल्पिंग देम बाई इन्वेस्टिंग इन दोज फंड अंडर दिस स्कीम ओके so the fund is sponsored by ministry of finance and is managed by sbi cap venture limited why venture sbi cap venture kya hai main abhi wo batati hu aapko theek hai and uh, swami has so far finally approved 130 projects theek hai and what all are included how they are done uh, and recorded the stalled projects customer complaints np accounts even projects that are litigation issues would be and having a poor track of it would be considered now theek okay? hai that how the government can help under this scheme by the ministry of finance apart from this now let's look at the question and try to understand so you remember when i told you about social stock exchange at that time i told you that housing projects are excluded but then we have such scheme which can help such housing projects but they are more importantly for the stuck ones the ones which are stuck so over here the statement one says the fund stands as the india's largest social impact fund established specifically to expedite the completion of the distressed or the stalled residential projects so the first statement is correct second statement it is a government backed fund and operates as a category 2 aif investment debt fund registered with sebi so a uh, theek hai thoda sa hum samajhte hain dekho maine aapko kyu bola sbi cap venture limited is managing all this theek hai ab ye venture क्यों लिखा हुआ है वो समझते हैं ठीक है सो बेसिकली स्टूडेंट्स यू ऑल मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ वॉट इज योर सॉरी ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड ठीक है ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड वन सेकेंड देखो ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड क्या होते हैं ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड वाई आई एम इम्फोसाइजिंग ऑन दिस बिकॉज न्यूज में आपका सच फंड लाइक फॉर दिस स्वामी इनिशियटिव के अंडर जो ये कैटेगरी में आ रहे हैं प्लस यू नो देर आर फंड ऑफ फंड विच आर इन टॉक बिकॉज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सपोर्ट टू दी स्टार्टअप सो यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस ऑल्टरनेटिव फंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज अंडर सेबी रेगुलेशन इज अंडर सेबी रेगुलेशन नाउ दे आर ऑफ दी three categories theek hai your first category is the one which is for the small and marginal enterprises theek hai your category one which also which also includes where they are supporting the startups theek hai and that's why you know those angel funds or aapke jitne bhi matlab social venture funds ye sab kuch iske andar include ho jata hai theek hai where they are at the very early or startup stage so those type of funds will be under the category 1 of uh, small and marginal enterprises category 2 is your equity or debt funds equity or your डेट फंड जैसे हम यहाँ पे वेंचर कैपिटल फंड की बात कर रहे हैं दैट वुड बी पार्ट ऑफ योर कैटेगरी टू नाउ वी हैव वन कैटेगरी थ्री विच इज योर विच इज योर द फंड वेन इन्वेस्टेड गिव यू शॉर्ट टर्म रिटर्न ठीक है द फंड विच विल गिव यू अ 
शॉर्ट टर्म रिटर्न्स ओके दीज आर योर कैटेगरी थ्री फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर हेज फंड ठीक है फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर हेज फंड विच आर फॉर दी शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड इट विल गिव यू मोर रिटर्न सो वी हैव दीज थ्री कैटेगरी सो नाउ इफ यू न्यूज पेपर यू सी ओके यू नो दीज फंड बाई दी गवर्नमेंट बिलोंग्स टू कैटेगरी वन और सो इफ दे आर समथिंग रिलेटेड टू स्टार्टअप द गवर्मेंट इज प्रोवाइडिंग यू फंड रिलेटेड टू स्टार्टअप फंड ऑफ फंड सो इट विल कम अंडर कैटेगरी वन इफ ओवर हियर इन द स्वामी स्कीम where uh, you know the government is providing them funds for the installed projects but they are on the equity and the debt funds so that would be under the category 2 of funds and since it is regulated by sebi so that's why sorry hmm so that's why over here you saw that the government backed funds are operated under category 2 of aif and registered with sebi clear clear now you can relate to it why they are under this category why they are regulated by sebi so if the statement would have been like it is under category 2 but regulated by rbi then looking at this statement and if you know what is alternative investment fund you could have incorrected the statement but right now it is a correct one and your option b that both statement are correct but does the what alternative investment fund means uh, you know accurately explains that what the scheme belongs to no they are two separate things so therefore they are correct but separate two is not the reason to such assertion assertion over here is that the scheme is providing uh you know funds for the uh, stalled project home theek okay, hai stall projected homes so your second statement is correct okay so next question we have different type of reports now what these reports says and what is the uh, relevance so let's talk about this 